Is Mishima a masterpiece? From director Paul Schrader, as you know, a great screenwriter for Martin Scorsese, he wrote Taxi Driver and many other movies. This one is, he claims his best movie ever, and actually, I think I agree with him. Let's dig into Mishima and why this is an interesting movie, why you might want to watch it, what you might get out of it, coming up next. <laughs> All right, so here's the gaudy looking Criterion Collection cover for Mishima, A Life in Four Chapters, about the Japanese novelist, artist, Yukio Mishima, that's a pen name, the most celebrated author, one of them, in Japan in the 20th century. That's what the opening titles tell us. He wrote 35 novels, several screenplays, books of essays. He was in film. He was a public celebrity. And then, as is well known, this is kind of a spoiler, but if you know history, you would know that this is going to happen. The movie or is likely to. The decision on his part to commit seppuku after taking his private army into a Japanese barricade, a military headquarters where he gave a speech. It's a very strange ending to perhaps a very strange but fascinating life, and there's no doubt why Schrader picked this as a subject matter for a film. In fact, Mishima, you think about Schrader's filmography, Mishima fits very well because it's about this driven man who you might think, and probably most of you are going to think is delusional, who is so driven by principles and by being you know, confronted with the problems of the modern world, meaninglessness, no identity, sort of lacking as a cultural heritage or disappointed in his cultural heritage, so driven by those things that he is willing to do whatever it takes, including paying the ultimate price, which is what he says in the movie, of killing himself and standing up or sitting down or whatever it is for his beliefs. Schrader seems very interested in these kinds of figures. Taxi Driver is very well known for that, but also the movie First Reformed. Throughout Schrader's filmography though, the question of art and beauty, which is delusion, which can seduce you, but then trying to act properly, act ethically, these issues come up in Mishima. I tend to watch this movie as the disaffected modern man, and I do mean male by that, although you could say human beings in general, but modern men with a little bit of testosterone, machismo, they want something out of life that is both sort of primal and tribal perhaps, but also very beautiful and meaningful in a spiritual sense. And Mishima covers all that territory trying to document the life of this man who is hard or even impossible to understand. And you got to remember this is an American making a movie, really a Japanese movie, and so that sort of cultural difference is definitely there in the movie. And you can question whether Schrader actually captured Japanese culture well at all. But then again, there is a sort of question of maybe there's a broad global problem with men like Mishima who really want to believe in something but have little to nothing to believe in and have to invent it for themselves. <laughs> There's no doubt I think Schrader sees a, a little bit of a kinship because Mishima is an artist and perhaps a high quality artist in this biopic. This is one of the best constructed biopics I think ever. Very clever, very crafty very highly stylized and those of you who have seen this channel enough know I, I like highly stylized movies this presents the life of Mishima but in such an interesting way but we never get lost in it I feel like and we always know where it's going it begins with so the countdown the day of Mishima going to do what he does on the day that he ended his life so in a way this is a 24-hour movie and then has many flashbacks in it the flashbacks in black and white are to his past but I think taken from his autobiographical novel uh, Confessions of a Mask and then you get the not just these black and white scenes but also then these stylized theatrical productions Schrader films three different plays that Mishima wrote filmed plays that are in the novel. I think these plays are arguing that Mishima's own life and wants and desires are in the play. So this combination of the day of his death, flashbacks in black and white, and the three filmed theatrical productions, you get this rich texture of a life that cannot be expressed easily or simply in two hours. I think this is the best possible gesture for such a complex person is to show them complexly in terms of color, 
framing and structure, all of which this movie does, I think, incredibly well. Plus, it has at least, I to my count, five Mishimas. There are at least three actors who play Mishima, the man, and then two to three others who within the play, if you take them to be Mishima or him, that leaves us, I think, with five to six different Mishimas, which is goes along exactly with the problems of this movie. Mishima trying to express himself, but only coming across in a world of appearances as a masked man. And he wants to express his true self or his true beliefs, whatever those are, but he's striving his entire life to figure out how to do that well. As the subtitle says, this film is in four chapters, beauty, art, action, and then harmony of pen and sword. The movie then is roughly about aesthetics, about ethics, about creating art, what it means to be an artist, to be an expressive artist, both in terms of writing, but also visually in terms of film, as Mishima is a celebrity, as you see in the movie, and makes films about himself or appears in films. But Mishima has this drive, and he brings up Lord Byron, the great English poet, who I think is a likeness to him, that he has a need to transform reality. All of those British or English romantic poets, like Byron, for example, or Keats or Shelley. <laughs> And he's striving to unite, as he says, art and action. To see, not see art as a separate simulation that's just this, uh, you know, escapist wonder world, but something that unites with reality and creates a new sort of person, a new even society, which is his, I think, one of his political goals. The film asks an absolutely fabulous question that I think pretty much everyone needs to meditate on. And that question is, are you willing to pay the ultimate price to do something that may accomplish nothing? Will, it, will you stand up for your principles and beliefs even if you get nothing out of it. And that's a very significant challenge for the modern world. One, a lot of people just plain aren't principled, or if they say they are, they don't follow through on that via their actions. Two, would they pay the price, which is, in Mishima's case, death, actually dying for what he believes in. How many people have actually done that or tried that? And um, maybe we don't want those people doing that, for one thing, that may be what Schrader is bringing up. If people actually follow through on their principles and they have some hardcore radical principles like Mishima does, they can become like Travis Bickle and Taxi Driver a little bit scary and do things that we don't want them to do that will cause social chaos even though following through in their beliefs, that's what they want to happen. And in Mishima's case, that may also be true. And yet a man like this, presumably, I think according to Schrader, there's something to him. If you call him a terrorist, for example, if you say the worst things about him, you still have to say they stood up for what he believed in seemingly. And I think Schrader in this movie and other people who have liked this movie like that in part, because Mishima is a spiritual force to be reckoned with as the end of the movie, I think when he goes up in the fighter jet, that's not giving a spoiler, is arguing those wonderful moments when he's in that combat fighter, I think are very key lines in this movie. To me, I like to break this kind of thing down. I think Schrader is following this. Uh, Soren Kierkegaard, the Christian existentialist philosopher, whose three levels of life are aesthetics, ethics, and the religious life, and Mishima seems to follow, at least in this movie, that track of the, the, the life of beauty and trying to not be bored and seeking out sex and pleasure and even the body and crafting his body into something beautiful. But then he want, is, gets interested in acting and ethics and trying to act out his beliefs, which leads him to this sort of perhaps higher spiritual plane by the end of the movie, or this ultimate act that gets him nothing. Now, all of these are themes and ideas in the movie, and there is no doubt this movie will irritate and annoy people, frustrate them, and get them angry at perhaps what they see is this sort of tribal male, this guy who is into imperial Japan and isn't a far-right you know, sort of figure. I think a lot of people will be upset at this movie. Even if you would be, I think the movie might agree with you. I think there's a number of ways to view this movie. He's a sympathetic figure. He's a tragic figure. He's a moronic, delusional figure. There are three ways. I think those are three different ways to view him. And then the movie's form and its style are 
absolutely gorgeous and fascinating to me. I, I am endlessly fascinated by the way that Schrader put this together, both in terms of his script, which is quite, quite good, but then filming this and then choosing to put in these three filmed plays, which obviously are gaudy and extremely highly stylized, and yet they're trying to express this man who can't express himself. I'm not sure we ever get the real Mishima in here. This is almost or maybe a postmodern or modernist to postmodernist sort of film. However, the striving to get into somebody's being, to understand their writings and to see them as they might want to be seen. I think this film is pretty successful no matter what you think of Mishima. Think of him as a terrorist or a great hero or neither or in between. And I love Philip Glass's scores. Some of you might be annoyed by them, but I find them to be compelling. And of course, they're used by a number of people like Errol Morris, the great documentarian. Here, Philip Glass's score, I think, really adds a lot of compelling uh, textures to the Mishima character. One caution here when I call this a great movie is I have not researched Mishima the man at all. I think it would take years to really have a good grasp of what's going on with him and for me either I'm going to make this video and just say what I'm saying or I'm going to delay it for years while I read dozens of books about Mishima and I should do that because he's a very interesting figure but a foreign figure to me in that I don't understand him and his time period and his culture and his wants and desires so if any of you are experts in Mishima out there and you want to tell me this movie is garbage or it gets things wrong or it gets things right or it's a great representation of him let us know in the comments. I'd love to hear from people who really know a lot about Mishima's writings, his plays, and the man himself. I really do believe this is one of the best biopics ever made, and I hope people will study it. I hope future filmmakers and screenwriters will study it, because normally we get these boring or ordinary biopics that go through a person's life chronologically and just seek to honor them. Those aren't that interesting to me. Something that is more developed and makes the person complex and unreasonable, but but empathetic. I like that sort of thing, and that's what Mishima does for me. What do you think of this movie? Let us know in the comments, and please subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much. Have a great day.